In this video, we'll be looking at the photoelectric effect. We will look at Einstein's relation as well as Einstein's photoelectric equation. We are used to looking at light as a wave because we know that it shows diffraction as well as interference, which are exclusively wave property. But in this lesson, we are going to look at light as a particle. And a particle of light is known as the photon. The photon is defined as a quantum of electromagnetic energy, a packet of energy. This means when learning the photoelectric effect, we are going to look at a ray of light as many tiny photon particles that are flowing through. This is the particulate nature of light. The term photon is not limited only to visible light, but to any member in the electromagnetic spectrum, which means we have visible light photons, we have infrared photons, we have gamma photons, and so on. To help with the explanation of photoelectric effect, I've recruited my friend, Mr. Smiley Face, and this here represents metal X. This is a random metal, metal X. Mr. Smiley Face is a valence electron that is attached to the surface of metal X. The valence electrons of metal atoms are not very tightly bound to the metal atoms. If they have sufficient energy, they can easily come free as free electrons. The photoelectric effect is an interaction between the photon and the electron on the surface of a metal, which results in this electron leaving the surface of the metal. There are a few rules to this interaction. The first rule is that a single photon will only be able to interact with one electron. It is a one to one interaction. The second is that if the energy of the photon is enough to knock this electron off the surface of the metal, then the electron will instantaneously leave the metal. The moment the photon hits the electron, it will leave the surface of the metal. And now we need to discuss the energy of the photon. The energy of a photon is directly proportional to its frequency. And the equation relating the energy to the frequency is known as Einstein's relation. Einstein's relation states that E, the energy of the photon, equals to HF, the frequency of the photon, where H is known as Planck's constant. So we know that the higher the frequency of the photon, the higher the energy contained by the photon. Each matter has a different amount of energy that is required to remove the electron from its surface. Let's say this is metal X, and we try to use a photon to remove the electron from the surface. You can clearly see that the photon does not have enough energy to free the electron from the metal surface. Once the photon knocks the electron, what happens is that the photon is completely absorbed by the electron and the photon ceases to exist. So what happens if we try to use the same photon but with higher intensity? For example, if this was a visible light photon, what if we increase the light intensity? When you increase the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation, what happens is that you are only increasing the rate at which the photon collides with the electron. This is still a one-to-one -one interaction. No matter what the intensity of light, at one point of time, only one photon will be able to collide with one electron. Let's say a low intensity of light results in 10 photons colliding with the electron. Each photon will be colliding with this electron separately. It is a one-to-one -one interaction. Let's say we increase the intensity of light and a thousand photons arrive and collide with the electron in one unit time. Still, the interaction is the same. It is a one-to-one -one interaction. No matter how many photons collide with this electron in one unit of time, the photon simply does not contain enough energy to knock the electron off the surface of the metal. And therefore, the answer is to use a photon with more energy. From Einstein's relation, we know that in order to get a photon with higher energy, we need to use a photon with higher frequency. So let's choose an ultraviolet photon. Let's say this ultraviolet photon has just enough energy to knock the electron off the metal surface. So now we have the electron free from the metal surface, but this electron has no kinetic energy because the photon only has enough energy to knock it off the surface. This minimum energy required to knock the electron off its surface is known as the work 
function. The work function is defined as the minimum energy required by an electron to free itself from the surface of the metal. Since the energy of a photon is directly proportional to its frequency, this means that there is also a minimum frequency of photon that will result in the photoelectric effect, that will result in this electron being freed from its surface. And this minimum frequency of photon is known as the threshold frequency. From the wave equation, V is equal to F lambda, we also understand that the frequency of an electromagnetic radiation is inversely proportional to its wavelength. This means that together with the threshold frequency, the minimum frequency, there is a maximum wavelength to enable the photoelectric effect to occur, to knock the electron off the surface of the matter. And this is known as the threshold wavelength. Let's put the electron back on the surface of the metal. What will happen if we use a photon with even more energy than the UV photon? So let's use a gamma photon. This gamma photon has energy more than the work function of this metal. Work function is a property of the metal. Each metal has its own work function. So let's say the gamma photon has more energy than the work function of this metal X. What happens then? You can see that the photon not only managed to knock off the electron from the surface of the metal, but it was also moving after that. And so the excess energy from the photon, once again, we have to remember this one-to-one -one interaction. And once the photon collides with the electron, it is completely absorbed by the electron. The electron only requires energy equivalent to the work function of the matter to be released from the surface. But the whole photon was absorbed by the electron. What then happens to the balance energy from the photon? The extra energy from the gamma photon is going to be transferred as kinetic energy of the electron. The electron is not only knocked off the metal atom's surface, but now it also has kinetic energy to move. Therefore, the energy of the gamma photon is now converted into the work function, that is the minimum energy required to remove the electron from the surface of metal, and also the kinetic energy of the electron, which causes it to move. The relationship between the energy of the photon, the work function of the metal, and the kinetic energy of the electron is expressed in Einstein's photoelectric equation. This is Einstein's photoelectric equation. By the way guys, if you're getting any value from this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Thank you very much for doing that. That's it for this video guys. If you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one a week. I'll see you guys in the next video.